a big Broadway opening. Everybody who's anybody in New York is inside this theatre tonight. Everybody but one man. This man. Me. Curtain's going up. Hey, Lord, where are you going? Didn't you direct this? I, I, I just have to... Uh... One or two things. One thing, get out of this theater. Uh, Mr. Fellows, um, is there anything wrong with your seat? Yeah, it's facing the stage. No, just go ahead. Okay. It's going to be a disaster. I can't just sit there and watch. <laughs>
and amorous jealousy. However, if Bogdanovich show you all those comical moments that required physical comedy from the actors, like in a beautiful dance backstage, for some moments Bogdanovich gives you as a viewer ideas of comedy without showing you any moment or comical accident. Having the idea to use sound even for some moments, Bogdanovich gives you hints of what is happening behind the scenes. Even if after a few moments you realize what happened because you see the characters being affected, Bogdanovich is playing with your mind. He tells you the conflict escalated and it is bigger than before and he makes you want to know what is happening, telling you already that something is happening, making you more curious and to see, to see with your own eyes what happened. The physical comedy is the main element of the film, so Bogdanovich returns to it in an instant, but it is a good idea from the director to make the spectator feel like he is a part of the play and of the whole story and to present you a comedic moment only through the magic of sound and through suggestion. Earlier I said that the relation between the characters is an important element in the film's concept, but there is one character that is in the middle of all of that chaos and entanglement that unites every single character, and that's Selsden. Being an unpredictable character with a huge predominance to drink, every character is trying to keep him in touch to make him avoid alcohol. And being a little deaf makes the character funnier in certain situations. I talked about that moment when the physical comedy was an important moment in the film. Well, in that moment there are three storylines. The storyline of Lloyd, the director, with Brooke, the blonde actress. The storyline between Gary and Frederick, based on the jealousy for Dottie. And the funny comical relief storyline of Selsdan and the bottle of alcohol. There are other small storylines, but in a very interesting way, the Selsdan story is always gonna happen and they will always take care of him not to meet a bottle of alcohol. It's like Selsdan is their little kid to say it like this, and no matter what they are gonna talk about and argue about, they will always gonna make something to keep Selsdan in check. Somehow still, I think more and more about the characters and their personalities, and all I can think about is how different they are and yet how well they can relate with each other. What is interesting to me is how Frey made the characters to be unique and how Bogdanovich represented them into its adaptation. If you pay attention to them, each character is totally different. Depending on their personalities and the way they act, they are incompatible to say it like this. One of them is shy as hell, the other one is incredibly jealous, other is a perfectionist. But holding that in mind and thinking of what I said about Selsdan's relationship with others, I think that the best representation for those characters is to say that they are like a family. Well, not exactly a family, but more like a very close group of friends. Each and every one of them has a little idea of what type of friend each other can be. Talking about them like they are a family is a little bit too stretched due to their interests with each other, but a close group of friends is the perfect representation for them. With their interests in one another and with their connection through the theater play, those characters are easier to get attached to as a viewer. What is so gorgeous about their relationship is that it's going from bad to worse due to their ego and due to their little conflicts, but in the end they realize they went too far and they ask Lloyd to help them now. Now, Lloyd wasn't that perfect leader of the group because in a way he was more interested in Brooke and how to be happy with her, but he did what he could to maintain a connection with the play. So when the chaos reached its maximum and the play was affected, the actors asked Lloyd for guidance to solve their chaos. So at the end of the film we see that everything is fine, the play went well, each and every one of the actors dealt with their issues, couples were made and everything is as good as it should be. Their choice to finally reach Lloyd and to put a stop to all those moments, even if they were comical to the viewer, represents a new level of maturity to them. From the way they were represented at the beginning of the film to the final chaotic moment, yes, we can say that everyone grew up and took their responsibilities. Even Lloyd. And I don't know if I can say that the play itself is a character into the story, because, in a way, the play went on as the actors performed and was adapted to the situation that was backstage, so the play evolved too with all the comical situations and little jokes the actors did in their conflict. Probably the play was a character after all. The play evolved alongside those characters, and probably was a character that represented all the actors. After all, the actor's main purpose was to perform in the play, but they had other issues, so the play mirrored the actor's actions. In the end, every action has a reaction, and in this case, when the actors realized everything went too far, the play represented that through their actions on stage. So yes, the play was in a way a character. It wasn't just a context for this entire story. It was, after all, the representation of the chaos and all the comical situations made backstage. I started to think about the cinematography of the film, and I humbly have to say that it is filmed very simple and yet it is filmed in a way to give you every single detail about every single character. 
Being a film based on a theater play and story presents this concept of story within a story, the film is made in the way that you can participate as a spectator to a play, even if you are in front of the stage or backstage. There are moments where the concept of cinema takes the front row because Bogdanovich is playing with the perspective in an interesting way, making the story more filmic. The way it is edited makes it dynamic, the concept of sound is extremely well made, after all, the sound guides the viewer through certain scenes. It gives you this feeling of theater, of a new space. From the point of view of how the film is made, I have to say that I love the style. It is simple and classic at the same time. It is beautifully shot and the atmosphere that is created is amazing. Somehow, you kind of feel that you are there with those characters during the rehearsal and during the play. And this is a good thing because it gives you as a viewer this feeling of reality that you have when you are a spectator to a theater play. What Bogdanovich did is a challenge to most of the film directors, but I think he succeeded to make it properly and to give the viewer this feeling of real show, of fun and enjoyment. I don't know what to talk anymore about other than the fact that there is something about this film that makes you wanna rewatch it and rewatch it. It has a magic on its own that makes the viewer to have fun all over again. Probably it has something to do with the way the actors perform or with the atmosphere created by the director, or probably it's the story and the characters that make you want to enjoy the film again. Or probably it's everything. To be honest, the film has a great cast and somehow you want to see the film just because you are a Michael Caine fan or a Christopher Reeve fan, for example. But seeing the story and the situation, the film grows on you pretty fast. I don't know, there is something about this film that I can't describe. Maybe it's a good thing, it is not necessary to properly understand why we want to rewatch a film, as long as the film makes us feel comfortable and have a moment of joy. If there is a moment that you might want to enjoy a comedy and have a lot of laugh, I think that Noises of is one of those films that make you forget about your problems very quickly. The world and the situation that is presented to the viewer is what it is in a circle of friends or in a family, so Noises of won't be a simple film. It can be a portal to a story where a group of people is trying to do something together but everyone has its own views on the subject and are not quite interested in that subject after all. After all, Noises Off is originally a theater play and if the viewer watches the film and understands the story and its message, he will feel more close to it. With a great comedy and great actors, I can say that Bogdanovich brought a world of theater with the same feeling and the same experience on the silver screen. And the way he did helped to create a good film that can be experienced by anyone anytime. It's a comedy, after all, if it makes you want to laugh, its purpose was completed.